Okay, I just wanted to show this off a little bit. This is my first, or my most successful compost pile. I shouldn't say my first. Here's another one over here just getting started. But I'm really proud of this. This, this one has turned out by far the best that I've ever done. And as you can see, there's still some, uh, you know, there's some still scraps. But uh, look at that, man. It just goes to show that, uh, that patience and a little bit of practice pays off. Look at that beautiful compost. Very, very happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to Garden Fever. Today I got a really good episode for you. Today we're going to be talking about this plant right here, the Calathea ornata, aka pinstriped plant, aka zebra plant, aka peacock plant, <laughs> aka cathedral plant. A lot of names for this one, but I, I wanted to go over it today because I really like it. It's uh, got a got these pinstriped or these striped slightly pink uh, leaves but uh, as you can see with this new one coming back it also has a very dark uh, maroon or velvet type uh, color which I really enjoy let me swing this backwards to kind of give you an idea but I really really maybe I can bring it closer I really enjoy this plant um, a lot of people have told me that it's kind of finicky to grow uh, I've had no problems at all with it it's it, I planted it I water it when it, once the soil dries out, I stick my finger in it, and it grows pretty good. But uh, I'm going to go over this plant today. I'd like to share with you all the, all the ins and outs of it, and we'll go from there. This plant is native to Central America, uh, South America, or South Africa, uh, the Indies, um, Thailand. I believe Central America is where they believe it originated in, but it is it's spread uh, through throughout the world, uh, often grown indoors. It likes indirect bright light, so not direct light, but uh, it does like it kind of bright, so next to a window, but it doesn't get direct sunlight as good. The temperature it prefers is 65 degrees to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, or 18 to 29 degrees Celsius. Uh, it does like high humidity, so you wanna, it does, it does benefit it to spray it every once in a while and kind of keep it as, it, or maybe even put it in a bathroom where it gets lots of steam. It's an evergreen perennial in the zones uh, 10 to 11. Uh, everywhere else it's more likely going to die off either too hot or too cold. So it grows very good inside indoor inside the home. It does like high humidity and moisture. Uh, it doesn't like to be dried out. In fact if you get uh, brown tips and it's, they start to kind of dry up or turn brown and shrivel it's usually uh, due to lack of water. So you don't want it to dry out completely. A little bit is okay, um, but not completely. Don't assume that uh, over fertilizing this plant will produce more uh, pr productive leaves and whatnot. That's really not the case. Uh, it likes just a moderate steady flow, so a stable environment is best for this plant. Uh, they grow to be around two feet tall and two feet wide on average, depending. The most common pest for this, for this plant is uh, scale bugs, mealy bugs, uh, aphids and spider mites, which is generally caused through uh, being wet too long and f fungal growth on the soil. So, keeping good airflow and a constant watering uh, schedule to it, uh, or a, a stable, I should say, watering schedule to it, uh, works the best. Um, occasionally, they w their leaves will brown. It's kind of like the pothos, where you through the winter, summer. Uh, fall spring cycles as it rotates it will lose um, some leaves occasionally so don't panic when you get a, a leaf that browns just uh, with some sterile uh, clippers or scissors or whatever just go ahead and clip it off um, this is relatively common you only need to be concerned if a lot of the leaves all at once are starting to turn brown that usually means something's wrong uh, you can uh, propagate this plant by dividing it, so uh, separating clumps of leaves and roots um, into separate things is how you do it. Um, you want to make sure that there's enough leaves 
uh, connected to those clumps of roots in order to get it going. Like with most plants that produce uh, photosynthesis, they are air filters, uh, which is always a good thing for house plants. I, I, I always highly recommend that. Um, this is one of the great things about house plants is it helps filter your air. Uh, it also removes toxins such as benzene and formaldehyde and things like that. So uh, having clusters of plants inside your home is beneficial to your health. Keep in mind that during this cycle of uh, regenerating and uh, losing leaves that they generally turn yellow before. But it can also be due to overwatering. So if you see a lot of it all at once, it's, it's generally due to overwatering or lack of water um, is the most common reason. Uh, as far as fertilizer go, one that has iron in it is, is what I would suggest. Uh, this particular plant, for some reason, uh, that is one thing that it needs. This plant does flower, however, it is extremely rare. Even in, a, in, even in uh, its native environments, it still doesn't flower a whole lot. So you, more than likely, if you're growing this plant indoors, you'll never see it uh, flower.